Konnichiwa, hello, my name is Mickey and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing a foundation review with a new Makeup Revolution foundation. This is the Conceal and Glow Illuminating Foundation. I'm going to be doing a wear test and all that good stuff and we're going to see just why Makeup Revolution came out with this specific foundation. I'll get a little bit more into that further into the video. If you guys are new here or you enjoy my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that bell notification so you know when I upload my videos and as always my disclaimer if you are super sensitive to profanity or if you are easily offended this is definitely not the place for you I am a no filter bitch and I have no idea what's gonna come out of this potty mouth so keep that in mind while you are watching now if you guys are interested in the makeup revolution conceal and glow illuminating foundation then just stay tuned um, as you can say I look like pure shit today <laughs> and I have to go and run some errands which is usually when I do a foundation review and that is why we're here now I'm gonna be using the the Smashbox primerizer this time because the last foundation review did not go so well when I used a different primer and I should have just stuck with what I always use which is the uh, primerizer which is this guy right here I love it because I have extremely super duper dry skin and this is just a great hydrator my skin has been the nicest in it's been ever <laughs> like I just always like look at my skin and as you can see it's all just kind of like um, dark spots and discoloration, but I don't really have any any acne on my skin. The other day, I was just kind of like staring at my face and I was like, wow, it's been since you were a fucking teenager before you started puberty that you didn't have any acne. And so I am just like really enjoying the way my skin looks. And sadly, today's foundation is uh, medium to full coverage as it claims. And so we're going to be hiding all of this stuff. Makeup Revolution has come out with three different kinds of these and I actually wrote some notes here on my little notepad explaining what the difference of all three of them are. All of these retail for $12, which I think is an amazing price point because this does have one fluid ounce. This buildable coverage foundation has been pumped with brightening vitamin C plus light reflecting pearl particles for the ultimate skin loving radiant finish. Simply blend over the complexion and watch your skin appear effortlessly illuminated, brightened and gorgeously glowing all day long. Now I love a good glowy foundation I am really not a matte person just because again dry skin most dry skin bitches do not like matte because it clings to all the dryness now I want to go over a few different things here for the concealing glow I noticed that on makeup revolutions website there's only 20 shades now in the conceal and define and the conceal and hydrate there is 50 shades with this I don't know exactly why they came out with this because the conceal and hydrate is a very nice glowy finish and the conceal and define is a matte finish so you have glowy finish and matte finish I don't know what this guy is for because this is also a glowy radiant finish so I feel like who, who did they make this for I have no idea the packaging is very similar with the conceal and hydrate I'm just gonna compare these two because again I don't have the other one as you can see this one is a hot mess now with the conceal and define they actually first came out I believe with a doe foot applicator and then with the conceal and hydrate is when they change to the pump the conceal and glow also has a nice little pump which I kind of appreciate that because I didn't really like the doe foot applicator in there because it was just a little too much for me so the concealed and define is one it is oil free so that's like their main thing that they're trying to advertise out there is it's more for oily skin even though it is advertised for every skin type I do not like when brands say that something is for all skin types because it normally isn't it's normally catered more towards one uh, specific skin type than it is all skin types hopefully that makes sense now the conceal and define is advertised as full coverage it comes in 50 shades it is still $12 retail one fluid ounce of foundation the finish was said to be demi matte and I totally agree with that ever since I've bought that foundation I've worn it several times especially when I was a little bit more hydrated or have hyd had hydrated skin so I can definitely attest that the conceal and define is definitely a demi matte finish now with the conceal and hydrate this has added benefits for dry skin because it's got hyaluronic acid in it this also comes in 50 shades $12 retail price one fluid ounce of foundation so unlike the conceal and define which just says flat out full coverage this is more adjustable so it's medium to full coverage and this has a satiny 
glowy finish so with this guy with the conceal and glow that's where i'm a little confused because this only comes in 20 shades and the main thing about this is that there's vitamin c in here so with the conceal and hydrate there's hyaluronic acid because again it's catered more towards dry skin and then the conceal and define is oil free because to me it's catered more towards oily skin and i just keep thinking like okay vitamin c that can literally be for anybody dry skin types oily skin types normal skin Skin type but this doesn't actually say what kind of skin type it's geared towards or meant for this is advertised as medium to full coverage it also said it's very buildable which again medium to full coverage and this has a radiant glowy finish so do you guys kind of understand like why I don't get why makeup revolution even came out with this now of course like all my other foundations I'm gonna do one side with a brush the other side with a sponge by the way I got this in the shade f1 because that is normally my shade in makeup revolution um this is also an f1 which is the conceal and hydrate and I believe the conceal and define that I have um, in the garage is also F1, but they are all completely different. So I advise that you either go in store or check online the swatches that they have because they all differ very slightly. Whoa. Okay. So first and foremost, that shit is hella liquidy. Do you guys see it? It's like slowly running down the back of my hand. That's crazy because the conceal and hydrate, nothing like that. That thing is solid. It does not move that is this guy right here and as you can see the shade already is totally different so i'm gonna do a little bit of a comparison here because i am curious Ooh, that is really really wet that's the only word that really comes to mind with that so right here we have the conceal and glow and then here we have the conceal and hydrate as you can see this one which is the conceal and hydrate is a little bit more of a darker neutral undertone while the top one has a little bit more of a I want to say I mean they're both neutral undertones but this one is like a little bit lighter which is kind of strange and this one looks almost a little pinkier I'm just gonna go ahead and dot the face because I don't know what kind of coverage this is because you know claims aren't always correct so I'm gonna take my flat top cupcake brush and I'm going to blend this side out and we're gonna see I don't know there's like literally no coverage at all whatsoever I am not seeing any coverage on the skin this is kind of like bringing me like flashbacks to the Haley's beauty foundation because that shit was a nightmare for my skin it just didn't look like it was really doing anything and this is kind of the same this is just adding like a weird uh glowy layer to my skin but there's really not that much coverage it's almost like my skin but a little bit better not too much better because as you can see it's only kind of toned down a little bit of the discoloration but not by much it just makes this side looks a lot healthier than this side over here but that's about it I'm not seeing any real coverage going on it's already clinging to the dryness on my forehead which is not that much so I'm gonna go ahead and take another pump of this and try to just go in directly um, from what's on the back of my hand here and try to add some coverage because this is not this is not doing anything now we're getting a little bit more coverage there as you can see a lot of my dark spots are not as showy as they were just a second ago when I only had one layer of foundation on I will say that this is definitely uh, buildable because I was able to build this part up but medium to full coverage buildable? Absolutely not. I feel like I'm really on the high end of low coverage right here. I'm going to go ahead and use my sponge. This is the Juno & Co. Uh, Black Cloud Sponge? Thunder Cloud Sponge? I'm not really sure. It's the black one. And I am just going to take a pump of this onto my sponge here. So I've got this much. As you can see, look at that. It's really, really liquidy. It's just kind of like slowly going down there on the sponge. And now we are just going to apply. One thing I will say is that the sponge side definitely has a lot more coverage for the first initial layer than the flat top kabuki brush did. If you guys didn't know, I always use my sponges dry because that gives me more coverage. When it's wet, it soaks up the product a lot more and I really don't like that. So that's one layer with a dry sponge this is two layers with the flat top kabuki brush so I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is better applied with a sponge especially if you want more coverage on the first initial application so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my face 
with the sponge because it just feels so much better going on as well. For some reason with the brush, it feels a lot more oily on the skin. Just looking at my skin now, I wouldn't say it's like extremely glowy and radiant like it advertised. It looks like I have skincare on. Like that is what I'm getting from this is that I have a very good skin day today. Now I am looking a little bit pale with this shade, which again, this is F1 as well as my Conceal and Hydrate is F1, but you guys saw the shades are a little bit different. So I'm gonna say that the Conceal and Hydrate F1 is more my shade because it's a little bit darker. And as you can see here, we be looking like fucking Casper. As for the dryness, okay, I know earlier I said it was super clinging to my forehead. I don't know where it went. It's like not super stinking dry like it was earlier. So I'm a little confused. On the rest of my skin, it's really not clinging to anything. I'm a little shocked, okay? I'm a little, little shocked. I'm actually really liking it because it is not clinging extremely to my dry patches. There are some areas where I'm like, mm, could use a little bit more hydration. But other than that, it's just my skin. So there's really nothing I can do about that. It looks like my skin, but better. Now, will I say this is medium coverage? Absolutely not. This is like, if I'm gonna say it's medium, it's very low medium coverage. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm a little scared because I don't really wanna build this up that much, but I do wanna see what kind of coverage I can get out of this. So I'm gonna take my sponge once again, and I'm gonna do half a pump. And I am just going to apply this on this side here, which is originally the brush side just to see if I can get a little bit more coverage because this does say medium to full coverage. So if it says that, I should be able to get full coverage in some areas. For some reason, it's really not adhering to my skin. It's almost kind of just taking away the previous layer and replacing it with the new, new pump that I just added. So I would say that this is a good solid medium coverage right here because again you can see a little bit of the discoloration but you can't see too much of my redness you can see a little bit of my redness but not that much over here where i didn't add another layer to get to that high medium coverage you can see a little bit more peeking through so i understand that this is a lot more um what do you call it buildable and adjustable which i really do like with the conceal and hydrate it's a little different if you add a second layer you're gonna get close to full coverage it's very high coverage but for now i think i am finished with this and i'm just gonna scoot closer and show you guys what is going on on this mug? Oh my God, look how crooked my eyebrows are. Holy shit, why are we just now noticing that? Okay, so anyways, the dryness. Let's talk about the dryness. My forehead earlier looked super dry. Like when I saw my forehead earlier with the brush application, I was like, shit, this foundation is really not gonna look good on dry skin. But as you can see, it has now sort of kind of melted into my skin a little bit more and it looks so freaking good. Like look at my forehead, even on the sides of my nose. Like look at that. You guys have seen other foundation reviews where it just looks super cakey, super gross and just crusty and just cakey is all the word I can really think of. Even here, it's already starting to crease, but it's not clinging to the dryness there. Y'all know if you have watched my previous foundation reviews that this little crease here, chin crease, is always dry and crusty as fuck, and it's always creasy. Now again, it is creasing, but it's not clinging to any of the dryness. That's crazy. That is freaking crazy. I am a little impressed by this. Now that I have the foundation on, I'm debating if I should use my tried and true conceal and hydrate concealer, or if I should use the new Makeup Revolution uh, concealer that they came out. I'm just gonna go ahead with this guy. This is the Conceal and Hydrate from Makeup Revolution. My absolute tried and true concealer. This is great for dry skin. Now this to me, the Conceal and Hydrate is a dupe. For the Tarte Shape Tape, I'm going to say it again, it is a dupe for the Tarte Shape Tape, but for dry skin. I used to use Tarte Shape Tape and I fucking hated it because it would cling to all my dry patches, especially when my under eyes were super duper dry. And when I was actually more normal slash oily skin, it worked amazing. So if you want a dupe for the Tarte Shape Tape, but you're more of a oily slash normal skin type person, I would advise the Conceal and Define. It has the same coverage same just everything and you're going to love it now this again is catered more towards dry skin so i'm just going to add this as my concealer today because it is the best honestly i'm not even sure why i put concealer down here because no one's gonna see it since i am gonna be wearing a mask 
But just to touch on like how this blended out on top of this specific foundation, absolutely beautifully. Look at that. The concealer actually has a little bit more coverage than the Concealing Glow foundation, which is a little crazy to me. Oh well, I guess we're just gonna have really brightened under eyes at this point. So the check-in time I'm going to, call, well the time now is 12.35, but I'm gonna call the check-in time 12. 15 because that's about the time where I finish actually applying the foundation. So 12 15 is the check-in time I'm gonna go ahead do the rest of my face get my hair Situated and my clothing change and then I will be right back all right, so I got the rest of my face done. It took a little bit over 30 minutes. Now, I have to say that I really love the way that this is sitting on my face and the way that it feels. It feels really, really good now. I didn't set all of my face. I only set the areas where I placed some powder, which is here and underneath my eyes. And that is it. I did not set down here or on my forehead. Now, my eyebrow over here just decided to say, fuck you today, and it's just not cooperating so yeah we're just gonna look on this side because this side you guys look fucking banging this side of my face looks so freaking good everything that i have on my face will be listed in the description box below today i tried a new shade of the elf bite size face duos i don't know if you guys saw my other video where i tried a very orange peachy shade so i went out and got this shade here and this is the watermelon face duo look at that highlight that highlight is absolutely beautiful. I really, really love these face duos. Now I am gonna go about my day. If you guys didn't know, I try to wear my foundation uh, wear test for at least six hours. It is now 1.20, so it's been a while, but I'm gonna go do everything that I need to go do and I will see you guys in my first check-in. So the time is now 4.30, so I've been wearing this for about four hours and 15 minutes. And a lot of breaking down is going on, especially on the areas where I did not set my face. This foundation definitely needs to be set, especially if you're going to be, you know, going out. It was a little hot today. It was like 62 degrees. I have creasing here, and these are the areas that I did not set. So this stuff is very, very creasy. It's starting to break down quite a bit, which, you know, I feel like that's with every foundation so far these days with my skin because there's so much texture there and it just kind of holds on to that texture and gets cakey over time because you know things are kind of separating getting gross a little bit of dryness here the sides of my mouth as you can see it's definitely starting to break through i have been wearing a mask all day and you can see like a little line from my mask but it hasn't really taken much of the foundation off the only area is right here and I don't know if I rub that off myself. Um, I believe it's the mask. Other than um, having to set this, I feel like this is a beautiful foundation, especially if you don't want like super full coverage. I still like the fact that my skin is peeking through and it still looks like really good skin. I also forgot to mention down here. Now it is breaking down because again, I didn't set this area and you can see just with the shadow, the creasing that is going on and you guys know that this is like my driest spot and it's still not really clinging to any dryness it's just kind of textury which i'm not mad about because every single foundation i've tried it always gets dry and crusty and cakey right in that crease and this one has not again i do feel all the breaking down on the sides of my mouth but that's again because i didn't set it so i'm gonna go do some house stuff and i will see you guys for my final check-in all right so the time is now 7 52 so i have been wearing this for over seven hours almost eight and i'm gonna scoot closer so you guys can see what's going on after seven and a half hours of wear this whole area has now completely just fallen apart. It's separating, but it doesn't look really that bad. I feel like if I would have set all of this, it would look a lot better because right now it's just breaking down in the areas where I didn't set it. As for my forehead, there is quite a bit of creasing. I don't know if you can see the little tiny creases up there that almost never happens with me. I also have creasing, as you can see up here, and some uh, creasing, like very mild creasing that you can see on my forehead. I feel like the only parts that are really troublesome 
are like the side areas of my mouth and a little bit on my forehead. I just really love the way that my skin still looks like skin. There isn't a lot of like medium full coverage going on. This foundation is just really, really pretty. And after it finally kind of meshed with my skin, it felt so much better. Most of the time with medium to full coverage foundations, by this time, by the six hour mark, I'm already feeling it not only separate, but I can feel the oils from my skin push through the foundation. And although I'm feeling a little bit of that around my mouth area, which is probably another reason why it's breaking down, for the rest of my face, I don't really feel like it's really thick or like my uh, face is trying to, you know, push the foundation off. Even under my eyes, there's no mascara transfer or anything like that. The only thing that I'm noticing with this foundation is you might want a pore filler because it does accentuate the pores next to my nose and the pores that are actually on my nose. Under my nose here is usually where it's extremely dry and it gets really cakey and it's usually the first area to rub off. Although it has rubbed off a little bit because I use tissues, it's not super flaky and dry like it would be with most foundations. The other thing is, of course, whenever I go out, I wear a face mask and I've noticed that the areas that I set are still just solid. They're there. Nothing has rubbed off from my face mask and I really, really like that because although this isn't a super thick full coverage foundation, a lot of the times the liquidy foundations move around a lot more, especially if you don't set them. So because I didn't set this area here, I think that's why one, it's a little like rubbed off in some areas and two, that's why it's breaking down so fast. And so I feel like if I were to have set the areas where I'm kind of creasing and where things are breaking apart, that it'll last so much longer. For the coverage, I don't believe that this is medium to full coverage. I feel like you can get this to a medium coverage if you wanted, but you might have to add like two, three, maybe even four layers in some areas. And I just don't agree with that claim with the medium to full coverage. I feel like this is a very low medium coverage or a high low coverage foundation. I just really, really like this so far. Of course, I'm gonna try it with other kind of face products and different powders and all that good stuff, but just wearing it today, I think that this is definitely gonna be one of my new favorites. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click that big red button that says subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you know when I upload my videos. And as always, if you have any tips, tricks, questions, comments, or if you like little and soft shit, leave it on the comment section below and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye bye. No worries, please get back